back here on the Rich Eisen Show is Chris Weber joining me here on the program. How are you, C-Web? Good. How you doing, Rich? I am hanging in there. So what what do we make of this series after two games? Let's just start macro. What do you what do you make of the first two games of this series? That is exciting uh, that we're getting our money's worth. And uh, as a fan, it's uh, no better time to be a basketball fan than the present because we're getting uh, some great basketball uh, that's just kind of just an overall summary. I mean, it's never happened. Two overtime games uh, in the beginning, uh, you know. So, I, to, to me, it's just an exciting, great basketball. When you see LeBron not get the calls that are so obvious to to get. Now, I'm not talking about the one where he's driving down the lane at the end of regulation and there was contact and, and referees are more prone than not, not to uh, whistle. When I'm talking about Andre Iguodala hacking him, when I'm talking about clearly Draymond Green holding down his shoulder in a jump ball situation and none of the three gray shirts call it, what what, what do you think when you see that? Oh, man, so many things go through my mind uh, when I see those type of things. But, uh, you know, first I have to say the refs are human, and so maybe they missed the call. The one on the dollar file in his arm, it doesn't look like he, should, he could miss the call. Uh, second, guys... Uh, Maybe during the year, flop so much, the refs don't know what to look at. And then, you know, maybe, you know, guys don't want to call it. I mean, there's, you know, four to five different scenarios, and I, I don't know which one it is. So, Mom, when you ask me what do I think, I go through every single scenario and uh, just wonder which one it is. But uh, there were some obvious uh some obvious missed calls uh, and, and some bad officiating uh, last night. Well, I mean, in that regard, obviously, as you point out, they are human. Um, is there any way, shape, or form that this is just a lack of respect towards LeBron in any way, Chris? Wow. Uh, I mean, it could be. That could be one of the scenarios, but I, I don't know if that's it. You, you know, you know. I, I really – I don't know. I know that place, uh, Golden State, is so hard uh, to play at and so great to play for that refs can get intimidated as well. I'm not just saying, well, maybe they just missed it or maybe it's a mistake. I mean – Everything's in play. Everything's in play, uh, in my experience, uh, in playing in the NBA. And so, you know, I, I really don't know. I, I, I don't want to think it's a lack of disrespect because if you really look at it, the ref shouldn't respect or disrespect you anyway. They should be like computers. They should just call the play. Mm -hmm. But that's the problem uh, when we do have a human element in it. But, uh, it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's baffling. I, I don't know the answer to why, but uh, it definitely – uh, makes you go through all the scenarios. Chris Weber joining me here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show from Turner Sports and NBA TV. So uh, to what do you attribute Steph Curry's 5 of 23 night shooting last night? Uh, I attribute him missing some, some open looks, him taking some bad shots, and uh, him having some good defense played on him. You know, I, I think it's the whole context of the story. I think Della Vadova is a tough, player and uh, his toughness showed to me on two plays last night when he went and dove from the ball and got the rebound out of that scrum late in the fourth quarter and it was no knees around but he still just dove there and got the ball in second on the free throw when uh, he shot the free throw and uh, he just, um, uh, I'm sorry, went up the missed free throw, uh, missed LeBron free throw and he tipped it in and so I think Della Vidova's presence was heavy last night but you know, it's, it, you know it's, it's really no one that can stop you, it's just who can put you in a position for you to make the toughest shots or to take you out your comfort zone? It's, you know, you got to, you know, I'm not, I'm not one of the guys that is, that's going to say Donovan Dover shut him down because the statistics uh, may suggest that. I think he played great and played tough and he was there for his team. Uh, but uh, I think a lot of that is uh, Steph just uh, having a tough night. You know, I'm used to him playing like a video game and being that automatic, but, <laughs> you know, it's, it's impossible at the end of the day. So, Chris, it's obvious that Steve Kerr feels his best unit is the small unit out there and that it prevents it, it it presents a lot of issues for the Cavs not only on on the defensive end but also offensively where it just LeBron would just pound the rock until there's eight seven seconds left on the 24 so what does Dave Black do moving forward with the final uh, stretch of this series when Steve Kerr decides to take Bogut out of the game and go small well, Steve Kerr has been, first of all, he's, he's so smart, man. Uh, I'm just really impressed with, with him all year. But I think one of the best things that Steve Kerr has done is LeBron is, you know, averaging 30 points in a triple-double. 
believe it or not, things could be worse as far as what LeBron's averaging hmm. uh, rebounding wise, scoring wise, if they were to play uh, them like Chicago, if they were to come over and double team and let other guys get hot. See, in this game, at least there's not a J.R. Smith knocking out eight threes or, or something like that. So I think the way that he's played them been really smart. I think it's tough because you can't play the pick and roll when you have small guys. You see, the only guy they can go at is Curry because he's small, and so they'll keep trying to set a pick and roll with whoever Curry is guarding, set that pick on LeBron, so they'll switch, get him in the post. That hasn't been working, and so for Blatt, I really think what he's going to have to do is slow the game down like they've been doing, go to the post, let LeBron facilitate after the post, and you're going to have to get strong doses of, of LeBron. You know, the one great thing about the triangle people never talk about, it put leashes on guys. It's like you, you never saw a guy standing around dribbling and just wasting time taking bad shots because your offense is your defense. And I think without the triangle, not saying they have to put that in there, but they're going to have to put the ball in LeBron's hands, go late into the shot clock, either he shoots it or has a hockey assist, or he's the guy that passes it to the and, main guy that's shooting. And what is Golden State's adjustment moving forward, games three and four, et cetera? I think we're going to have to – Draymond Green, who's, who's played great, he's going to have to step off offensively. Um, I, I think you're going to have to see a lot of guys scoring. It looked yesterday like uh, a lot of guys were looking for Steph just to shoot it. Of course, Clay was going off. But, you know, we're going to have to see other guys uh, loosen up and, and let the ball fly uh, so that – um, when they make more shots, that means Stephen can get open looks because now you have to make a decision of who to guard. And right now, guys aren't even making a decision. They're just jumping to Steph and making everybody else make the tough shot. And what do you think is the most um, uh, reasonable storyline moving forward? Is it A, the first two games, the Cavs have proven their mettle that once again, despite somebody being out like Kyrie Irving, they are as good as advertised and are here to stay and maybe win this thing? or they have spent so much energy in back-to-back -back overtime games on the road to just earn a split, and the Warriors are going to have uh, somewhat of a field day because they're used to the up-and-down tempo moving forward in this series. Which one's more reasonable of a storyline, Chris? I, I, I think it's the one that has to do with Cleveland showing their medal. You know, I, I don't think uh, Cleveland's getting enough credit. I don't mean the pat on the back, the fake stories about how LeBron is working hard. Oh, I, don't, I don't mean all that stuff. I mean, just the simple fact is, man, they do not have Kevin Love. And I don't care how much people dog Kevin Love all year and use him, you know, use him as a voodoo doll, stick pins in him. <laughs> Kevin Love is a bad man. He can play. And they don't have him, nor Kyrie Irving. And they won one on the road in the toughest place to play. I mean, I, I just, I, I don't, no one's giving them credit. I know, and, and I love stuff. I love all the basketball stories, but I can look at it, you know, and, and not say, well, this is a better story. That's a better story. And I, and I love stuff, but he has Clay Thompson that, that had 30 something last night. And we're seeing what this guy LeBron's doing. And I think, you know, that's the story. If Cleveland wins it, you know, this, this to me is one of the, one of the nicest, toughest, illest championships I've seen hard fought. And if Golden State wins it, they deserve it because they've had to grind it out all year. But, you know, Cleveland being without two great players, two all-stars, it's, it's amazing to me. All right, yeah, and Chris Weber right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Last question for you. Chris, you're going to go to the state of Ohio for an extended period of time. Are you okay with that? Because I know, yeah. you know, it's Ohio. You know what I mean? Yeah, see, I, I had a question for you. So let me, I'm going to answer that. But first of all, how are we going to be in football this year? Uh, you know what? I, I, I don't know. Um, it, it's, okay, it, honest, I, honest. I, I gotta be honest. I don't know. I like what Harbaugh's doing. Uh, I like the fact that he goes to Alabama and has, uh, has a, a mini camp and takes his shirt yeah. off and acts all sorts of crazy. I like it. Yeah. I like yeah. it. Yeah. I like it. You know? Yeah. I, I, I like us too. And, um, you know, I'm not gonna lie to you. I almost pulled for that other team last year to win just so the SEC wouldn't be dominant. So okay. we could recruit and get people in the Big Ten. But just let me get, just tell you this. So sure. I go to Ohio. I feel like I've been living there since the NCAA. But one thing many people didn't know, my cousin is Drew Carter. So he's this jerk that went to Ohio State mm -hmm. and caught touchdowns for them when they won a national championship. Didn't know and that. And I had a brother go to Michigan State. So I have to hear and fight all these stories every time I go to Ohio, whether I'm with family, whether I'm not. So, you know, I'm ready for Ohio. They they – they know what it is. They know I don't mess with, with the Buckeyes up there. So it's, it's all good. It's a lot okay. of love up there. It's still Big Ten country. Okay. And last thing, Chris, can, can I help with you and Jalen and the rest of the Fab Five? Can I, help, can I get everybody together for a one big group hug? Can I do that? Oh, man. The world is great, man. The world is good. Okay. So what, that, that's all. I just want to help. Let, let, me, let, me be the, let me be a guy who just can give everybody one big hug. Is that possible, Chris? Uh, 
Oh, the world is good, man. Okay. The world is good. Now, except, yeah. except when you're going to Ohio. So be careful, okay? Yeah, I, yeah, I do got to watch my back, you know. And they all give me some good Ohio State jokes because they got a million every time I go there. And you know what else they do? Mm -hmm. Like when the opposing team is on the free throw line, all they do is like put up a picture of Ben Roethlisberger. Or they put up the uh, Michigan M and everybody starts booing. So, yeah, it, it's bad there, but that's okay. I mean, if you were beat that many times by a university, you, you'd be mad and hate yourself, I know. You know hate I go there every year for Canton, man. I hear it. I hear it, but it's okay. <laughs> we, got our, we, got our, we got our own special coach. We're going to be good, Chris. We'll be fine. No, we're back, baby. We're back, baby. I love it. Thanks for calling in, as always. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. You bet. Thank That's you. Chris Weber making his way to Cleveland. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.